Tie the leader. This is number one bullshit. Lost the lead. I did not grow up playing the Halo franchise. But honestly, I wish I did. You see, I got the Game Pass a couple months back and decided to give the Master Chief Collection a download. I owned Halo 3 back in the day, but I never played online, and without the context of the prior games, I was a little lost on what the story was or even the threat that the actual Halo itself possessed. As a matter of fact, my buddy Gordnak, who has been playing through the campaigns with me on Twitch, he did play these games in their prime and he let me know that the remaster versions are done extremely well and with a detailed care that is fitting for the legacy that these games hold. Playing through the campaign of Combat Evolved for the first time was almost surreal. I felt some weird mixture of bewilderment and nostalgia. It was obvious to me why this game took the industry by storm when it was released in 2001. It was also pretty obvious that this game was released 19 years ago. What I'm talking about is that the level design and combat evolved started to get a bit repetitive with a lot of running back and forth through very samey areas. However, at the beginning and end of every level, you're rewarded with a cohesive cutscene that gives proper context to the stories and the levels you are fighting through. Oh no! Oh no! Now would be a very good time to leave! Obviously, the old graphics aren't that great nowadays, but the fact that I could seamlessly switch between the classic and remastered graphics at the press of a button is a nice touch, especially for someone like me who never got to experience them back in the day, but has an immense amount of respect for the art and games from this era. Halo Combat Evolved has a pace and an ambitious scale that is much larger than that of many modern AAA titles. It is easy to see why this game achieved the popularity that it did and set the blueprint for what shooters were to really become over the next decade. To this day, many shooters follow the same basic structure that Halo set in place. Insert story campaign right there, and insert a high octane multiplayer right about here. On the other side of that coin, Halo did something back then that would be thought crazy if pitched at a modern brainstorming session. They actually focused on the story and cooperative content over refining the multiplayer. Although, this is also probably due to the fact that multiplayer was reserved for split screen and local LAN parties. Plus, true online multiplayer wasn't introduced until Halo 2. The thing is, while playing through Combat Evolved, I always understood what the human's goal was, and more importantly, what Master Chief's goal was. You are, essentially, on an adventure alongside Master Chief to discover what the ring is, what its purpose is, and eventually, how to destroy it. It just feels organic the way that Master Chief, and by extension you the player, learn of Halo and its power. After I had finished Combat Evolved, I felt like I had a much deeper understanding of what Halo really was from a story perspective. I now had the tools, knowledge, and experience of these characters which gave much more weight to that game that I played when I was younger. I now felt more determined than ever to hop right into the next part of Master Chief's epic adventure. As determined as I was to jump into Halo 2, I was also a bit nervous. The first game had a great story that could easily be used as the foundation for any number of stories and plot threads. The building blocks were set up for the sequel to be truly great. My nervousness stemmed from the level design of Combat Evolved. It was very large, which is generally a good thing, but the levels were very samey. There was a lot of copy and paste in the corridor levels in the first game. This made some of the larger levels even larger, which inevitably resulted in these parts being a bit of a slog to get through, especially when they involved the Flood. I was very relieved when I saw that Halo 2 had a lot of care taken into the level design. There was a lot more originality, more scripted events, and the pace is not disrupted by running around levels that look exactly the same room to room. I didn't feel like I was getting lost as much. 
which led to a more fun experience as I was getting into the next part of the action quicker. And if you've played games from this era, you know the hardware was limited and that developers would purposefully make the levels windy and confusing to make the games longer. Halo 2 did a pretty good job of breaking the mold by making fun and interesting new environments for us to explore. The story in Halo 2 is a bit similar to Halo 1, and these three things will remain the same. 1. They find a Halo ring. 2. They need to get rid of it. And 3. The flood is going to be annoying as all hell. The thing here is that the game sort of assumes you have played the first Halo which is fine because the storytelling feels like it has a natural progression from level to level. The characters also feel like they have more of a chemistry due to the fact that we see them doing things as opposed to being told what their past achievements are. The war between the humans and the Covenant is in full swing throughout this game. It feels like the most epic conflict to ever happen in the Halo universe. What I mean by this is that in many stories, there is usually a past greater conflict that is referenced to and you, the player, are left picking up the pieces of the world or setting after said events. My point is that Master Chief and the humans are truly fighting for their lives in Halo 2. There is a sense of urgency and desperation that many games try to capture, but generally fall flat by trying way too hard to tell you as opposed to showing you. Every character feels like they are important and a part of the story. Commander Keys is a very witty commander that is capable of making quick decisions under pressure, it is arguably because of her that the humans make it through the events of Halo 2. I like to think that while I'm slaying the Covenant, Commander Keys and the rest of the human fleet is in some crazy air battle above whatever location I happen to be hopping around. All of this ties the whole story together for the dramatic climax that comes in Halo 3. So yeah, Halo 2 ends on a massive cliffhanger. If I didn't have the third game in the Master Chief Collection, I'd honestly be disappointed with this ending as it is pretty abrupt. I remember asking my buddy if that was it after we completed it. It was, and it wasn't bad, it just left you with more questions than answers. Answers that I needed to find out for myself. It was a real trip to get to Halo 3. As I said in the beginning of this video, I owned Halo 3 on the 360. However, back in the day, I was very confused by the story of Halo 3. I didn't understand who or what Cortana really was. I didn't know what the significance of the Flood was, and more importantly, I didn't understand what a Halo was, or what it could do. Not having any of this prior information before playing Halo 3 made a lot of the story fall flat when I was younger. This time around, however, I had the proper context and was actually excited to experience Halo 3 the way it should have been experienced all those years ago. The story of Halo 3 wastes no time in picking up where the second game left off. As me and Gorg were playing number 3, I realized just how much time and money was spent making this particular game one of the bests in the franchise. The graphics and animation hold up extremely well for a game released in 2007. Everything from the music, storytelling, setting, and characters are all handled in a way that flows together. This game never tried to be something it wasn't. I never felt like I was wasting my time on a bloated objective or that a minigame was slowing the pace in order to bloat the overall runtime. This was just a great game with a great story that left the ending open for another sequel. This ending wasn't as abrupt as Halo 2, but it was open-ended enough that you knew something could happen later and there would obviously be a sequel. It is no wonder this game was praised so much by my peers. I wish I could have experienced the online modes in their prime. Now, unfortunately, I am reliant to play the online multiplayer on the Master Chief Collection, which admittedly needs a little bit of work as of the time of writing. You could tell that Bungie really cared about this franchise. The work that went into these games had to have been extraordinary for the time. Playing through the story of these games, they almost feel flawless in their storytelling. That isn't to say these games don't have flaws, of course they do, but the demerits are hardly a mark against the overwhelmingly positive narrative that Bungie managed to tell in these three titles. I now see the Halo trilogy as a must play, in a similar fashion to the way you should watch the original Star Wars trilogy. They really are that good, and that's why I've tried to stray away from major spoilers in this video. However. 
If you did enjoy this video, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't, comment your thoughts on the first three Halo games. I'd like to know your memories of them. If you'd like to see a similar content like this, please don't forget to subscribe, as it is free and it really helps me out. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.